Today's lesson is on the great egret, and we're going to draw this bird because most of us here today have seen these birds. These are, these are those really tall, they're about three feet tall, and they're a giant white bird. It's kind of a relative of the, the great her the white herring. Um, you know what I'm talking about, those big giant white birds that we see here in Florida because we live in Florida. I'm with today a group of third graders. There's 26 of them today, and uh, we're eight, nine, and one ten-year-old. Uh, so most of us are nine years old today. So those are the examples we'll use at the end of class. Um, first of all, to make this herring or this egret, we want to uh, find the center of our page. So everybody, find your center, and then we're going to draw or we're going to look up diagonally, and we're going toward the top of our page. So I'm going diagonal toward the top and I'm going to take my finger and put it right on the edge of the top of this page here. Let me sh can you see that right there? It's right on the edge of the top of my page. And I'm going to put a dot right here. So here's the edge of my page and the dot. This is going to be the pupil of the great egret's eye. It's called great because they're big and giant. Giant white birds. They're beautiful. So make it a little bit bigger than a dot because that's the pupil. And then draw a circle around that. Real close to that. So it kind of looks like a donut. And there's the hole. There's the hole in the donut. Um, from there, draw around that again real close and then we're gonna come down this way a little diagonally down and I'm gonna give some texture here I'm gonna go back just rough edges as I connect because this is the little feather details that are around his head he's got a little graying color gray color in this area almost almost gray it's very light between white and gray. And then we're going to give him a, a curve real close to the top of his head here. Right here. And then we're going to form, if you picture in your mind, like a letter S. So what I'm going to do is bring my neck down and I'm going to go over. So I'm coming down, over, like an S curve. Or actually, look, this forms almost the letter C. Down, over, and then I'm going to curve around. See, this forms a giant C. Then I've made a curve around. A sharp curve, almost like I'm doing a circle here. This is going to be the negative space. Then I'm going to bring it back up. And I'm right near the head here. See where I've come back up diagonally. Now let's get underneath his chin so we can form this neck. Um, here's our eye. Very close to this line, I'm going to make almost a little horizontal line here. I'm following this swoop. Now I'm going to come continue here, and I'm going to bring this over and bring this up. So I'm slowly connecting. Then I'm going to add the beak. This will form the beak from here. Now this is going to come curve around. Now I want this to be equal distance. Let me do my neck first and then you, wa you watch first and then you do. I'm going to come down just a hair around like this. So see how the neck is curved. The neck is bent. See this should be nice flowing curves here. So it kind of looks like the letter S, but look what happens at the back. It's getting bigger here at the bottom. So this is a tight curve here, kind of like a C curve, and then a backward C coming to the body. Now don't go way over here yet, because we're going to swoop down on our body, just so you get this neck curve to the body. Okay, now you go ahead and do it if you haven't done it. Now we're going to start thinking about the beak and now their beaks are very long and narrow pointy at the end because these these egrets they go in the marshlands and in the shores they're a shore bird and they will pick at the the water 
and pick into the mud and grass areas for the fish and bugs. So they need a long, now watch, I'm going to do the beak first. I'm going long straight out, and then I'm blending it in with this bottom. Long straight out to a very, very tiny point. So it's wider here and then narrow. And then I will split it. I'm going to come down the middle here very carefully to split it so that I have a top and lower beak. And now where it connects in, I'm going to do a jagged line. So let me show you close up here what's going on. And so I'm going to do a jagged, this is going to be a jagged zigzaggy kind of line here, back and forth, back and forth. See what I've just done here? I've just done this part for the beak detail. Now I'm going to add a little bit of feather texture back here. So I'm just going to go down, up, down, up, down, up in these light little lines and a few little lines in here just to give them some some feathery feel. Now we're going to start getting this is the back of his uh his toward his back and wing. Now, I'm going to go toward the back down here and I'm angling it toward the diagonal. I'm going to go picture his body coming down to the bottom edge of the page with these long feathers. So I'm curving up around. Now if you wait till, you, till I draw this so you can see, then you can draw yours. But watch how I'm doing it. Up, then I'm going to the diagonal, diagonal near the end of my page. Now I'm leaving some negative space here. Negative space is space that we don't use. So I'm not using this right in here. Depending on the size of your bird, you might need to use this space. Now I want to blend this in I'm going to swoop down a little bit. I've just slightly curved down a little bit from this neck area to give a body. And then I'm coming in to do some tail. So gently. Now if you're having trouble with this curve, just keep it straight. This becomes some feathers in here, some feather lines. And then this will become the wing and tail feathers. So my wing is going to be just curve. Watch how I'm going to do this. Down, up. Some of these curved long lines. Diagonal curve. Just to give some detail. Then I'm going to do some feather lines in here. I'm going to stick the legs in now and we're going to go diagonal, diagonal, like the 11 on a diagonal, like you're making a number 11. And then I'm going to come forward, forward, really long. Do this slowly so that these are kind of equal distance. This is kind of like his back leg elbow or knee. And then a little line out and a little line out for feet. Now you can fill this with grass and stuff at the bottom so you don't have to draw all the detail of the toes. And then the other leg can come here, cross over. It's going to go down, then the back knee, and down. And then coming out if you need to. If you have room, you can have it coming out. If you want to widen, you want to make sure that it's kind of wider. I'm going to add another little line in here to make mine a little bit wider at the top. Now we're going to do some tail feathers so they're long, graceful, and the feather strokes are just kind of curving. So I'm coming near the center, curve, near the center, curve, filling it with tiny little feather lines. So I'm trying to give a detail of this long feather. Years ago in the 19, early 1900s, these egret feathers, these beautiful great white egrets were used on hats, fancy women's hats. and they were depleting part of the population. So fill in some feather details in the back here. 
Now you don't have to put lots of lines, just a little bit to show these are the fancy tails in the back. You could put in some more line in here, and then a feather line in here. This is the wing area here where the feathers are longer. And then the tail feathers. You can even add another row of feathers in here. Now your environment, you can put in the environment. Um, you can make a horizon line if you'd like, where the earth meets the sky. It's a straight line, but look, go behind your Im image. Subject, horizon line, go in behind your subject. Now here's your beautiful sky, and then you have the earth. You can make the Everglades, a swamp, a river, a pond. A lot of times we see them on the edges of our ponds or man-made ponds. So if this is water, look, you put a few little water lines in. So you can go ahead and make your environment. If this is the Everglades, you've got a little bit of land back here. You know, you can stick your palm trees, sunset, whatever you want to do, rainbow. A little bit of ground in here, maybe. So notice I'm not doing it continually straight. My horizon line is straight. Then I stuck a little ground in here. And I'll show you grass. To the, you flick to the left. I mean, flick, flick to the right, flick to the left. Cross over. Cross up and over and bend. And you're, you're bending grass blades. Make some small and short. Small and short. And you can even do double blade grass in the front, but you want to cross them over naturally. Natural reeds, here's some taller ones in the front, and you can fill in. Now, if you want to put them on the ocean with seashells, it's up to you where you put them. But this is how you do gradual lines. Look, they never start and end at the same place. And then far away waves are really small and skinny and placed really close together. I'll let you look at that for a minute, and I'm going to pick some kids' examples here. These are my third graders working, uh, drawing along with me. So I'm going to pick some of them. Here's one example here. And she made a really great design. Lots of feather lines. Um, here's another one I'll use. Let me see. Oh, here's some cat nine tails. That's cool. Here's one that somebody had time to color in. And again, these are third grade students. Eight and nine years old. These are my eight and nine year old examples. This one did clouds. Here's some really beautiful feather textures here. And there's my last one here. Cat nine tails. So these are all swamp things you can add. And I want to thank my third graders for helping me draw the great egret.